enjoyed today's playlist. I thought it had some uh, entertaining stuff and also a little bit that inspired some thought, particularly the Frank Shamrock and Dana White interviews. For my rant of the day, I want to focus on the MMA pr promotional landscape, where we are now, what I hope for, and where I'm afraid we're going in the future. You know I'm a cup is half empty kind of guy. I tend to accentuate the negative. Meh. Sorry, I can't help myself. That's what I do. It's my inclination, and I'm going to honor my inclinations. I've been worried, worried, worried about the UFC's declining ratings. I'm a fan of the UFC. I love their product. However, I'm a bigger fan of the sport of mixed martial arts, which I think is truly a transcendent form of combat sports and, and the sport that you know I've, I've built my whole life around. It's my livelihood and my passion, and I'm just a fan. So I can't imagine how fighters feel, but I'm sure they're even more intense. Same goes with coaches, trainers, managers, everybody else involved in this sport and industry. And the UFC so far has been a great steward of the sport. Unlike their biggest rival, Pride, in Japan, which collapsed amid scandal, the UFC has sailed on, growing onward and upward ever since their breakthrough in 2005 with the Ultimate Fighter success. Then in last year, they signed the deal with Fox Sports, and things seem to be headed onward and upward. However, they've had some definite growing pains this year. Whether it's the plague of injuries that's caused so many cancellations and reshuffles of fighting events, Everything from UFC 151 being outright canceled to UFC 148 losing its headliner to UFC 149 losing its headliner, etc., etc., etc. The ratings have been down, the pay-per-view sales have been down, the Ultimate Fighter seems to be effing dead in the water. They're losing 100,000 viewers a week with no floor in sight. It almost makes me wonder if FX is even going to see the season through. I wonder what the threshold for FX. They've dropped from... Number one in the key coveted male demo of 18 to 34, down to number two last Friday, and signs they could be down as low as number three. Uh, if they keep dropping like this, they will be soon, and at this point, FX could get more ratings and sell more ads uh, pretty much with anything. With the movie reruns and the show Sons of Anarchy one more time, and uh, it's hard for me to understand how the FX, uh, the the Ultimate Fighter on FX is a home run for FX at this point. However, the Fuel TV deal does seem to be working for Fuel TV, and that gives me some hope that the Fox corporate behemoth is going to stay interested and stay behind the UFC. Although I've been disappointed by their willingness to invest in the UFC, I really don't think they've lifted a finger to promote anything. They didn't have to. They, they advertise the shows they've got coming up, where they've got them coming up, and that's pretty much it. I haven't done much to support the UFC's pay-per-view business. And it makes me think that overall, you know, for all Dana White's criticisms of Spuke TV or Spike TV, he's taken a call in at Spuke TV in a display of class and taste that I'm repeating because I'm a little monkey and I do things like that. But Dana... Uh, he's been really down on Spike TV as the worst network in the history of the universe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the deal is, sometimes it's good to be a big fish in a small pond. And with Spike TV, the UFC was the only fish in the pond. They had wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Spike. They had UFC Unleashed. They had, you know, the fight nights, and they had reruns of fight nights, and they had tons of. They had their countdowns and prime times. If they needed some time on Spike, Spike made it happen. FX doesn't need the UFC. FX has a stacked lineup of quality programming, hit shows. Sons of Anarchy, Louis C.K., all that noise. They've got critically uh, acclaimed shows. They've got hits. They don't really need the UFC. Squeezing the UFC into their schedule, uh, not something that does much for FX. And then Fox itself, so far, you know, the first two Fox UFCs on Fox were, were very successful in terms of ratings. The third and fourth uh, pretty much dived. So we've got a fifth coming up, and they've got a lightweight title fight on the line. That should make for good promotion. They should be able to promote the fight during the NFL uh, and college football, which they've got a huge audience that, that they can advertise that event to. So this is a make-or-break event. Uh, and not, I don't know, make-or-break. It's a seven-year deal. So they've got, they've got reason, you know, strong encouragement to work things out and, and, and improve on what's going on. Nevertheless, the UFC really needs to prove that they can become highly rated programming and something that Fox is going to want to build around and promote heavily, not just an afterthought like the NHL was in the 90s when Fox uh, had an ill-fated deal with that sporting league. So that's my rant for the day. I, I meant to rope in some talk about Bellator and Strikeforce. I think I, I I think I should mention, you know, next year is going to be the test for Bellator as they as they move on to Spike, and I think the alliance with TNA Wrestling with King Mo Lal, who's going to be wrestling on on TNA 
on Spike and fighting for Bellator, that's going to be a very unusual experiment. The UFC had some huge success with, with Brock Lesnar. Uh, going all the way back to Ken Shamrock and Dan Severn and Tank Abbott and Don Fry, they've, lots of UFC fighters have gone back and forth between MMA and pro wrestling. But it'll be very interesting to see a fighter who's literally going to be on TNA every week and every six to eight weeks he's going to be fighting for real on Bellator. It's going to be very interesting to see how that succeeds. I also suspect that Rampage Jackson would like to be over there and I'm curious to know if he wants to be involved with TNA wrestling. That's going to be a very interesting learning curve for both Lawl and possibly Jackson. It'll be very interesting to see how Bellator does. I've, I've got my hopes. I, I, I think that you know, they've proven that they're savvy business people and they've built this organization from nothing but they haven't proven they can market fighters and build stars and, and create destination programming. That's what's going to be the test next year for Bellator. We'll see if they can do it. I think the tournament format uh, and, and their branding tends to, to lower the fighters. Instead of building the fighters, it, it creates sort of a gray wash of, of just Bellator MMA, and nobody even knows what Bellator is. So, you know, it's, it's just going to be very interesting. As for Strike Force, the sooner they kill that cow, the better. Um, it's the, the, it's not fair to the fighters. The fans aren't getting quality product. Showtime certainly not getting, they're getting a cheap product that sometimes delivers good ratings, but I don't think it's what Showtime really wants. And this brings me to my final point. Ultimately, I think the ideal scenario would have been for UFC to stay with Spike and cut a deal with Showtime and CBS rather than the fuel FX Fox Troika that they've got now, which isn't ideal. I think that Spike is a perfect promotional vehicle. It's got huge reach, just as big as FX, uh, without the programming competition. And Showtime, I think, could could outperform Fuel for the for airing international shows, up and coming fighters, so forth and so on. And then CBS would be perfect for the big blockbuster events, uh, slightly bigger than they've been putting on UFC on Fox. But anyway, that didn't work out for a number of reasons, partly because uh, CBS and Showtime uh, had a terrible relationship with the UFC from the beginning. They tried to compete uh, via Elite XC. That led to the Kimbo Slice era, wherein Kimbo was on CBS, had some huge hits, then uh, collapsed utterly against Seth Bretzerzelli. Lost in 14 seconds, looked terrible, uh, and then that, that pretty much killed Elite XC. Then Strikeforce uh, stepped up and took over that void, and that, that led them to being pressured into signing Fedor Emelianenko, which bankrupted the promotion. Emelianenko uh, pulled out of uh, the April 2010 uh, Strike Force show on CBS it ended up featuring um, Jake Shields and Dan Henderson and the Nashville brawl between Jason Mayhem Miller and Jake Shields' entire Caesar, Caesar Gracie fight camp. That combination of low ratings and a live on air brawl um, killed CBS's interest in live MMA for the foreseeable future. And with the kind of weak ratings that uh, the UFC has been falling on Fox and FX, I doubt they're regretting that decision. It's too bad because there was a point at which UFC had, or MMA, had a huge momentum build. And the UFC was doing great numbers on Spike. The WEC was uh, doing good numbers on uh, with Pulver versus Favor. And uh, Elite XC was doing great numbers with Kimbo Slice. It looked like everything could go together. Uh, the UFC Ultimate Fighter was doing great numbers. Uh, it looked like things were going to go onward and upward. Instead, they, they hit a plateau. MMA as a whole has not matched what it was accomplishing in the 2007, 2008, 2009 period on television. So we'll see if they can turn it around. I hope so. I'm confident that Dana White and the Fertitta brothers know what they're doing. But uh, every day that they keep making the same mistakes makes me question that. So. Onward and upward, we're rooting for the home team, we're rooting for the sport of MMA, and all the promotions have been able to make a, a go of it and uh, treat the fighters well, etc., etc. We'll be back tomorrow with more MMA of the day and an MMA tete-a-tete -tete with Eugene S. Robinson and myself. So I look forward to that, and we'll see you tomorrow.